I, think, I don't think it would necessarily do that, but I think it could. For some people, they will see a connection. With short, and we have to remember that when we write code, we are writing fiction. We're making up stuff. It's, it's, it's all fiction, but it's executable fiction. Um, but I think with short fiction, and particularly very short fiction, I, I write flash fiction, which is very short fiction, um, it makes you concentrate on it makes you concentrate on every word. It makes you focus on how am I communicating the meaning. Instead of thinking, I will write lots and lots to communicate a simple idea, you reduce it. What are the key words here that convey the mood of the piece, that convey the actions? And it forces you into thinking about the value of the words uh, far more strongly and to look for the noise words and to look for the noise sentences and to look for a description that is too passive and it's not active enough and explains too much, too explicitly, but to the point that you lose track of what's really going on. So I think for some people, they may benefit from that. And I do know some people who, um, uh, who, are, who have a foot in both worlds, who are in software development, but also have an interest in writing and do that um, as a pastime. But I also know some people who are actually writers and they, um, and they, they consider themselves writers and have published many things, but software development is the thing they do on the side. And that, that keeps them in money. So you can't earn money uh, by being a writer. So uh, I think it can, when people see the connection, they can see how it can influence, but there's not a one-to-one -one mapping. One of the most important things, I think, to improve thinking style is to be more critical. Not to criticize, but to be more critical um, of your assumptions and to look at your own assumptions which is very difficult for us to do. We're not, we're not really wired up for that. Um, but to, whenever you look at something, what is the other thing it might be? And this actually relates also, ties together with the architecture of uncertainty talk from yesterday. What is the alternative way of looking at this? The minute you have two or three ways of looking at the same thing, whether it is naming, whether it is a point of structure, whether it is a point of abstraction, the minute you have an alternative, then you can now weigh these up. Humans are actually quite good at pairwise comparison, comparing a couple of things. But normally we default to a habit, and we don't think. So, the better, the, so to improve your thinking habits, you need to question the fact that you've got a habit. Observe your habit. Am I doing this because it's effective, or am I doing this because I've always done it? and I picked it up off my colleagues, or I picked it up off a blog, but I never really understood the full reason, and so now I, it's, part of my, uh, it's part of my own programming, you know, it's, it's built into my spine, and so therefore I don't even question it. Um, and actually to talk a st take a step back and be more critical, how else could I do this? What are the benefits? What are the, um, what are the weaknesses of each approach? Um, and to be, in that sense, more critical, more um, objective, to try and see it as if it was not your code as if you were someone else. So I don't know that's a, a magic solution, but it is, I think it's one of the things that can help um, people. Uh, and I, I've, I've changed my mind on things that I've stood up in front of people and said, yeah, I think this is really important. And I've actually then revisited it because I've uh, come to question it. I, somebody has shown me something better uh, or I have found a problem and I started questioning it and I suddenly discovered I had a habit and what I was telling people was I have a habit and I think it's good. I was not giving them a profound reason and so therefore it's that rational approach. What is the reason this works? I think that is the, that is the issue. Um, James Surowiecki in his book uh, The Wisdom of Crowds, he made this point very much that um, group intelligence is a by if you group intelligence is a byproduct of di is a byproduct of diversity in communication um, and you need some of that diversity sometimes it can be annoying that somebody doesn't agree with you but in the long run actually it turns out to be better than somebody simply agreeing with you um, it shows you a slightly different world and you can sometimes see these kind of sunken silos in companies where um, they, it's the same people have been developing the same thing for many years. No new ideas have come in. And it doesn't mean, although they understand what they're doing, when you look at their style and approach, it means that what's happened is that sometimes um, some accidental thinking habits have become ingrained as normal. Um, had somebody else come in, sort of said, wait a minute, hang on, why are you guys doing that? Oh, because we've always done it. Well, maybe there's another way. So the. We often try to aim for team stability, but perhaps we need a little bit of, we don't need it to be perfectly stable. We don't want it to be static. We need to get new ideas in. And I think that, yeah. A little bit of shaking. Yeah, a little bit of shaking up and not agreeing with people is, is, is okay. Um, you know, uh, it's, uh, uh, 
and it does demonstrate a bit of diversity. It means that you're more likely to be able to solve new things because you have a broader base of intelligence to draw on.